Hi everyone, welcome to Guide and Grow TV. I'm Sylvia Arishan and today we're going to be talking about fighting, hitting and throwing. So how to understand the underlying needs of children in these behaviors and also in this video I'm going to teach you some strategies on how to actually help guide those situations. Um, the first thing that we have to remember is that when children are displaying behaviors such as hitting, throwing, or biting, there is always an underlying need that isn't being met. So for example, if children don't feel connected, if they don't feel safe or secure, um, sometimes when their emotional, uh, mental, or physical needs aren't being met, then this is when they can display those types of behaviors. So don't take it personally. I know it's hard, but it's not a sign of disrespect towards you um, as an adult. It's actually because they're struggling in that moment. So they're struggling with a big emotion or with one of their basic needs not being met. And this is why children display these types of behaviors. Um, and one thing we do also have to remember is that children's prefrontal cortex, which is the front part of the brain, and I've spoken about this in my previous videos, it's not actually fully developed until a child is 25 years old. So the part of the brain that deals with rational thinking, um, how to process emotions, these are things that children don't actually have. So it's our job as adults um, to teach them in these moments of frustration or anger or um, these types of behaviors that we really can find other ways and solutions to deal with that and help children build the skills on how to self-regulate. So, you know, there are different types of situations where these behaviors can be prominent. So, you know, when you're dealing with an infant that's biting a lot, you know, this could be due to teething, due to frustrations, nonverbal toddlers, if they can't communicate something, a lot of the time you'll see them lash out because they get frustrated and they just don't know what to do instead. So us as the adults need to model that for the children and guide them in a way that they'll be able to redirect their behavior. Um, another thing we do have to remember is that all feelings are accepted and certain behaviors are not tolerated. So the feeling of feeling angry or frustrated or upset over something um, or anxious, sometimes children might display these behaviors because they feel anxious about something. Those feelings are absolutely accepted. And it's really important that we acknowledge those feelings and don't just be dismissive of it. So instead of reacting to children when they've hit or um, something like that, or they're angry and say, you know, why did you do that? Or blaming them and shaming them. That's not nice. Don't do that. You know, when we blame and shame the child, we're not actually teaching them anything in that moment. So I'm going to show you three strategies on what to do instead. Um, also, one other thing I wanted to mention was timeouts. I know a lot of people use that strategy, um, but one thing I do have to mention, and I've mentioned this in my other video, Montessori and Discipline, is that when we withdraw love from a situation, so if we put a child in timeout, we've completely disconnected from them um, and we've placed them in a space that doesn't actually teach them a, what to do in the situation instead, B, what they've actually done wrong. So the association isn't even there. And it doesn't really allow for the opportunity to build the child's skills. And we have to remember, children are only learning. So these opportunities can present as great opportunities for learning and building our children's skills. So the three things. Firstly, I've mentioned acknowledge feelings. Now I have a whole video on big emotions and how important it is to actually acknowledge feelings. When we acknowledge feelings, so when we see a child that's say they've hit out of frustration or anger, in that moment, it's um, the first thing that we have to say is, you're so angry. Um, and just ignore, and sometimes it's a guessing game when children, especially that are nonverbal and you just see them as frustrated or angry or upset, they could be jealous of another sibling. 
you, you've just got to throw some words out. Um, and it's important not to say, I understand you're angry. You know, I understand you're frustrated because the first thing, especially as an adult, when someone tells me, oh, you know, I understand you're angry. I would say, no, you actually don't understand. So we have to take that word out, make it about the child, connect with them. It's really important to empathize and connect with them on that feeling in that moment so that we can decrease the emotion and then we'll be able to deal with how to guide them with that certain behavior. But if we miss that first step, the emotions are high and then everything, everyone's still frustrated and they're gonna really struggle to get past that. So number one, acknowledge feelings. You're so frustrated. You look so angry. Now, point number two, state your expectations. So my body's not for hitting. I won't let you hurt me. Um, hands on your own body. So I would always suggest to tell a child hands on your own body and make sure you display that for them. So it's no good if I say hands on your own body and I grab the child's hands and put them on their body. So it's really important just to stay calm, you know, focus. And this is the hardest thing in that moment when a child has hit you or kicked you or screamed at you. Um, it's really hard to remain calm in that moment. And I do have a video on choosing a strategy on how to deal with our own emotion before we step into this um this kind of situation because if we meet a child's aggression with our own aggression it just fuels the fire and nothing's going to be solved it's just going to erupt and it's going to explode and that situation is not going to be an opportunity for learning for anyone so state your expectations calmly but you can be assertive so my body's not for hitting i won't let you hurt me hands on your own body i've used that a lot of times hands on your own body um, and so state your expectations. My body's not for biting. And what I've done is I've made it impersonal. So I haven't said, you know, don't bite me or don't hit me because that's automatically attacking a child. So the, the language we use around it can really change the dynamic of the situation. So I would just make it objective. My body's not for hurting. Hands on your own body. Um, and then we offer the child a choice. So step number three is offer them a choice. Now, offering a choice means how to actually give them a choice on how to manage their frustration or anger. So if it is a toddler that can, um, you know, clench their fists or stomp their feet if they're angry. So I would say um, you look really angry, hands on your own body. If you feel angry, you can stomp your feet or um, rip some newspaper. So sometimes I set up a calming corner where you could have things for squeezing like a stress ball, um, ripping some paper, drawing how angry. So when we do that for children, we're actually giving them some tools on how to self-regulate. So when they do feel that frustration or anger, what other things they can do to help them in that moment. Now, Sometimes in that moment, the emotions are so high that children will not respond immediately to those. So it's better to do that when they've calmed down. So I would just say, when you're ready, when you feel calm, I'll be able to talk to you or I'll be able to help you. Um, if Sometimes they also need a hug. So try and bring them in close in that moment. Um, you look really angry. My body's not for hitting. I'm here for you if you need me. Um, you know, I'm here for you if you need a hug. And don't think that that's putting yourself down or, you know, not uh, showing them that you're the adult or you're not being assertive. If you feel that you're being passive in that moment, it's not giving in to a child, okay? It's actually being there for them and showing them better ways on how to cope with those situations. So definitely offer them a choice. If it's an infant um, or like a young toddler that's non-verbal, you can show them some ways. Um, so, you know, mm, I'm so angry or uh, with a with a infant that might be biting, you know, my body is not ouch, my body is not for biting. You can bite this instead and give them a little, you know, teething ring or something that they can chew on because sometimes they just need to chew on something. Um, also, it could be a reflex action. So hitting sometimes, you know, it could be a reflex action. It could be to get our attention and you can just teach them other ways of getting um your attention. So tapping me on the leg or, you know, saying, excuse me, if they're a little bit older. Um, so yeah, number one, acknowledge feelings. Number two, state your expectation. 
without attacking character. So that's the big one. Um, you know, always make sure you acknowledge the situation and what's happening. Um, secondly, state your expectations without blaming or shaming the child. Um, and then thirdly, offer them a choice on how to do that. That choice might not be right there in the moment, but maybe later when they've calmed down. Um, and also if um, to give you an example, I actually want to give you an example of a child that we've been working with. And look, these skills, you do need to be repetitive. So the more that you repeat these skills and use them every time the situation comes up, it actually reduces the amount of times that it will come up as the child learns the skills. So once they start repeating and you kind of follow that model, you will see that the repetition will actually build your child's skills to the point where they know what to do in that situation away from the behaviors that are not acceptable. So we had a child um, who every time he walked, he was about two, it started off at around two years old, the behaviors. Anytime he would walk past someone, he would push them. Um, and then anytime a child came near him, he would bite them. Um, and, you know, we didn't see any, um, you know, no toys were taken off each other or anything like that. So I observed an observation around these behaviors is also something that will be very helpful for you. So I would just jot down some things that happened before, during and after those behaviors so that you can see the pattern. So once I started observing this child, I realized that he needed some space. So he felt threatened when anyone came too close to his body, um, if somebody was too close to him when he was working in his space and he felt a little bit threatened. He would bite or hit or, you know, because he didn't know how to communicate the fact that he needed some space. So what we started doing was acknowledging, you're so frustrated, you just need more space, you know, People are not for biting or people are not for pushing. You need to use your words, say, excuse me, I need some space. So we've been working with this child for quite a few months. And now when the child walks in and there's another child right by, he'll say, excuse me, I need some space or excuse me, I'd like to walk through. Now we've seen how these skills actually work and the children do respond. Even nonverbal children will respond to the choices that they have and also you empathizing with them and showing them a different way. Modeling is huge. And when we're in these tricky situations, the biggest advice that I can give to you is try, I know it's really hard, try and control yourself. Because when your emotions are projected and feel kind of like get, you know, you're quite worked up and really upset and it is upsetting. I know what it feels like to have children, you know, display those behaviors towards you. Um, it takes you a little bit of a moment to kind of, okay, compose myself and then I'm going to deal with this situation. So just remember, we need to help children. We need to guide them. When they display these behaviors, they're just crying out for help. They need our support. And the more that we can empathize with them, state our expectations and show them different ways of dealing with these situations, they will then build the skills on how to self-regulate. So I hope that's helped you. If anyone has any questions, please like, share, comment below, and I'm more than happy to answer them for you. Until next time, goodbye.